Welcome to Fired Africa Television, a program on Africa and the diaspora. I am Patricia Baby Mawa. The fitness industry has become a multi billion dollar industry. And today we have with us fitness expert and bodybuilding champion Stephen Olema. Stephen, you're welcome to Fired Africa Television. All right, thank you very much, Patricia. I'm very glad to be here. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, how was growing up like for you? Growing up uh, was very exciting for me. I was fortunate to have grown up in Africa for uh, my first 11 years before I came to Canada. Things were okay until probably when uh, I became a refugee in the Sudan. I came here only knowing a few words of English. Perhaps I could say hi, you know, uh, what's your name, you know, um, ask for food, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, it took me a while to pick up the language uh, and I think going through the education system made it a little bit easier for me. Uh, and so yes, I overcame the challenges of speaking English. I, uh, you know, uh, uh, I made sure that I worked hard and, and, and again, here I am doing what I enjoy, what I've been dreaming about. Planet Africa Television will be right back. We now continue with our special presentation on Stephen Olema, fitness expert and bodybuilding champion. It's not every day that you see a young man who's come from Africa, you know, becoming a fitness expert or becoming a bodybuilding uh, champion. Um, I know a lot of the parents insist on their kids doing law, medicine, one of those professional courses. So how did you delve into the fitness industry? I was very fortunate to run into this guy's image at the age of eight years old. And when I saw that picture, Patricia, I was inspired. Um, I, I, I was mesmerized. And I dreamed of becoming that man, uh, Mohammed Makawe. And if, oh. those of you who don't know Mohammed Makawe, you got to look him up because this man is a legend. He's a Hall of Famer. And, you know, the only Hall of Famer in Africa when it comes to uh, bodybuilding and fitness. I forgot about that picture for many years. Um, I came to Canada by the age of 11, and by the age of 14, I was in the gym. I was working out in the gym, learning, asking questions, and I did not think about that picture for many, many years. You know, you reach a point in your life where you ask yourself, you know, what am I doing with my life? Where am I going with my life? What is my purpose? While I was looking at myself in the mirror, at that moment when I was asking myself that question, then it all occurred to me, and I swear to God I got goosebumps all over my body, because all of a sudden, that image of Mohammed Makawe creeped up to my mind. It wow. all of a sudden occurred to me that the man I was looking at the mirror had become the man that had inspired that kid no and honestly it overpowered me it really did and to this moment even when I speak about it I really feel it because it was at that moment that's when I realized I had reached my dream and I had no idea how I got there I hired Steve as a personal trainer to um, compete in the Ontario uh, physique Association um, and I won my first show and the second show I placed in fourth. Going to the V. Fantastic. Lock those knees, make sure they're locked. If you don't lock the knees, okay, your lower back is going to arch. You lock the knees, it immediately goes to the abdominals, okay? Bring it in again. Beautiful. Steve is very inspirational. Um, he, he, he's very motivational. Uh, he, he means business. Like um, when you're training with him, um, me personally, I don't like to have that chatter. Um, and I like to just do what I'm there to do, which is train, and he gets me to that point. Olima is a renowned personal trainer and owner of Stephen Olima Personal Training Services. To date, he's won several bodybuilding titles both as a middleweight at the 2005 Eastern Ontario Bodybuilding Championships and as a lightweight at the 2006 Ontario Championship. If you can put a little bit of intention and purpose in the little things that you do every day, chances are you'll find the meaning to your life. Because most often, we go through our whole life, lifetime without knowing what we're here to do. Thank you very much. Now, 
Let's talk a little bit about the fitness part of what you do. Yes. So how did you get into the, because I know there are two different things, yes. the bodybuilding and then there's a the fitness part. Yeah. So how did you get into the fitness aspect? After being in the gym for all these years, learning from, you know, people that are in the gym, as well as, you know, you know I'm a university educated individual as well as a college educated individual, almost a certified trainer, right? Now, with all that knowledge, it's only, only, only proper that I give back Right? And if I can give back at the same time while I'm receiving, then it's a win-win situation. Now, when I help people reach their health and fitness goals, the results that they get are not just satisfaction for them. The results that they get are satisfaction for me. And certainly with that in mind, it was only natural that I got into the fitness industry and started helping out and started making a living out of it. The purpose at the time um, for having Steve in a trainer was because I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at a late adult onset, as they call it, at age 37. And I knew one of the better ways to manage and helpful ways to manage the diabetes is with physical exercise. So my initial goal with Steve was just to have something more than casual sports once or twice a week. And then only after spending time with Steve did he ask me the questions as to what my goals, where would I like to be in six months from now, and what would I like to accomplish and see for myself from the training that he could provide. As a personal trainer, um, when somebody comes to you and says, okay, I want to get in shape, um, how do you take them through the process to help them to get in shape? Every client is very unique. Every client is very different. And that's what is so beautiful about the job that I do. Right? It's, it's every client presents a new challenge. You sit down with that, uh, that client, you want to discuss what their goals are, find out what it is about that person that they want to change about themselves, because the change has got to come from within that person. Once as a trainer, I understand that about you. I want to make sure that you get a good checkup from your doctor, you get that clearance from your doctor. I got that okay from your doctor. Now we can sit down and find out what is your level of fitness? Right? And we can do that by doing a couple of tests. Very simple tests that we do will determine your level of fitness. And from there on, knowing where you are physically, level of fitness, we can now tailor whether it's a diet or whether it's a training program according to those specific needs that you have. So it's a process. And it's a process that takes time. It's a process that takes a little bit of caring and a little bit of concern. And this is why you know, if you're looking for some changes in your life, be very, very, very informed about the kind of trainer that you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Because that's a process that every trainer should be able to follow. And if your trainer is following that kind of a procedure with you, then chances are you are most likely going to get there when it comes to achieving those results. Stephen is a punisher, <laughs> but really not in a negative way at all. I've had a lot of different experiences with trainers over many years and the relationships have never worked out. They always start at a high and the, the issue of um, what I get from it and what I get from the relationship tends to start over here and declines. With Stephen, I started this relationship with very low expectations because I, I sort of, I didn't, I, I, I was at a point where I didn't really know if a trainer was the right idea. But the relationship, which came about rather kind of serendipitously, is started out, you know, at, at a really good place and has really grown. And I really attribute that a lot to Stephen's personality, his attitude, his openness, his warmth and his motivation. Planet Africa Television will be right back. We now continue with our special presentation on Stephen Olema, fitness expert and bodybuilding champion. Tell me a little bit about your newsletters. Um, how did that come about? The one thing that all clients have in common is the need for information. They need to be informed. They need to be updated. Right? And as a trainer, it's up to me to make sure that you're staying on top of your game. So a newsletter will help us keep you on track. I send you these newsletters, you're getting tips, okay? Sometimes tips that we've worked on already, that we've shared already together, whether it's in the gym or at your home. Or these are new tips. But at the end of the day, you're getting yourself 
at least twice a week. You're getting yourself some very important information that's going to help you continue to stay on that program. But it's, it's, it's certainly a way of me communicating with my clients and let them know that I care about them okay. and that, listen, if they have any concern, by all means, you know, through the newsletter or they, through email, whether through your phone call, I'm always nearby for them to contact me because that's very, very important for me and my clients. Okay, yeah. great. So what inspires you? I get inspired not only by people that are close to me like my mother, uh, you know, and people in the industry like, like Mohammed Makwe, but people in the community, people that are out there trying to do something important for all of us to benefit from. And I think if we could all do our share in that regard, then we're, we're, we're working towards a better, healthier, and of course, more successful community. Now you mentioned that your mom is one of your biggest inspiration. Yeah. Um, I know your mom, uh, she, uh, used to be the president of the biggest African festival in North America, Afrofest. Yes. yes. Now, how was it like uh, to be raised by <laughs> someone like, we call her Mama Mary? Yes, <laughs> yes, everybody calls her Mama Mary. Um, Mama Mary, Mama Mary was a typical mother. Mm. Uh, she's a typical African mother. Very loving, very tough, but uh, very justified, if you know what I mean. Mom was the type of person that always never shied away from disciplining me. And I think that I, at some point I kind of resented her for that. It's very challenging for a person like my mother, as you know, you know, uh, being involved with the community in so many aspects. You're so busy, your life is just always on the move all the time. As you know, she's still doing the same things, still always on the move, and she's always been on the move. So yes, it was very challenging for me in that, you know, I had to make sure that somehow you know, I, 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 I lived up to my expectations because she had certain expectations of me. And I think maybe to a certain extent, maybe I did not become the doctor that she wanted me to become. I did not become the lawyer that she wanted me to become. But I became successful in a different way. At the end of it, I can say that my mom gave me intention and purpose in life. She said, listen, whether you're a garbage picker or whether you're a doctor, at the end of the day, you want to be good at what you're doing. Wow. Okay? And know why you're doing it. Right. And I apply that to everything. Whether it's my clients, whether it's my own training, I will not go into the gym without intention and purpose. Mm. And that's the one thing that I teach my clients from the onset. Whatever your game plan is, whatever your goal is, right. you must have intention and purpose. That's important. If you don't have that, then you have to redraw. I agree. Uh, like someone said, if you don't know where you're going, any road will lead you there. So you have to have a purpose. Precisely. Yeah. Now, um, as a body trainer, I mean, yeah. you, you walk out and you, mm -hmm. you take care of your body. Do you find that uh, women uh, react <laughs> to you in a certain way? And how I do you was, handle I, that? I was afraid of that question. <laughs> While you love the attention, sometimes it can become overwhelming. And so you have to know how to handle it. And I think perhaps when I was younger, I probably relished it. Um, but as I got older, I probably enjoy it instead of relishing it. Any woman that exercises will tell you that. Any man that exercises will tell you that. You feel good about yourself inside and it exudes itself on the outside. And people see that. People get attracted to that. People want to come to you, want to talk to you, you know? And it's a beautiful thing. What is life without relationship with people? What is life without networking? So yes, at the same time, it's opened up a lot of doors for me as well. So yes, it's been a double-edged sword, but I can't say a bad one, right? Such is life, right? You get the good with the bad, <laughs> and you make the most of it, right? right? So uh, yeah, okay. I can't complain about that. What man is going to complain about women you know, saying, hey, you look good? Now tell me, what are your plans for the future? I've always said that any success here in Canada or anywhere outside Africa is really a failure if it does not, if it does not translate to any success back home. Right. So the, the plan is to make sure that whatever it is that we're doing very well here, that we can take it back home and help the people back home. And as you know very well, the people back home are slightly behind. And I shouldn't even right. say slightly, they're really far behind when it comes to a lot of things. And in particularly in the health and fitness industry, they're really behind. So they need some of this expertise down there. My plan is to make sure that I take some of this knowledge back home and develop some facilities back home and make sure that the people back home get some education. So really that's the aim for the future. 
And, mm -hmm. and I have no doubt about it that I'm going to accomplish that because that is what, it, what it's all about. And as far as I'm concerned, I've been on a good track so far. Now, there are a lot of young people out there right now watching um, who are probably wondering, why am I on this earth? What is my purpose? What yeah. advice do you have for such people? Everybody in this world, regardless of your ability, okay, regardless of what God has given you, okay, you have a purpose and intention. It's up to you to figure out that purpose and yeah. intention. And sometimes it will take you years to figure out. And I can tell you that a lot of people have go, go through their whole entire life not ever figuring that out. That's right. You don't want that to happen to you. Okay, you need to understand that regardless of what circumstances you're in, you can always improve. So as a, as a, as a young man, I was fortunate enough to get those kind of lessons. And those are the lessons that I would like to pass on to any young person that's listening or any young person that's ever interested in the fitness industry or any young person that's trying to strive to, to achieve success in life. Stick to your goal. Stay focused on your dream. It will come to manifestation. It's just the way it is. It will never reach there if you certainly give up on it. You have intention and purpose. You must Find ways to discover it. And if you can't do it yourself, there are people out there that can help you. It's a matter of networking, finding the right kind of people, because you want to surround yourself with the right kind of people. That is going to be your pillar. That's going to be the people that are going to pick you up when you fall down, when you need that extra hand. So that's very, very important. Great. Now, um, what advice do you have people out there who are probably um, trying to stay fit? What would you say to them? If you really want to succeed, you must continue trying. The problem is when people try and then they don't see any results and then they give up. The thing with fitness is, and I'll be very blunt, okay, you must dedicate time, effort, you must have discipline and you must be consistent. And you have to do it for a certain long period of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got to have short and long term goals. They have to be measurable. Get the help of an instructor, someone that knows what they're doing, and that person should help you get on a plan that has long and short term goals that are measurable every now and then. Look how far you've gone, how much you've accomplished, how much do you need to accomplish, where you need to go, and what needs to be done. These are formulas for success. Times it's a painful experience as you introduce new exercises or push new limits and boundaries. You do feel the effects of that lasting a few days later. And it becomes more of a challenge to get over the initial um, hump and then see results. And the results don't show up right away, so it's a little bit discouraging at the beginning. But once I was able to see results, and I saw changes in the way the body was, I saw changes in the weight, I saw changes in how I felt. Energy was better, focus was better, uh, my diabetes was much uh, tight, more tightly managed and controlled. And I found overall, you start to give you a better sense of self once you spend the time with Steve and work out and do the training. And after I would spend time with him, or more noticeable is when I started not to spend time with him if I had to travel or be away on business, and I didn't get my weekly or bi-weekly workout with him, I found myself missing it or not feeling the same or as good physically. So those became um, new things that I didn't think I would notice or even think about before, and that became one of the ways I realized how helpful it was to me over time. Steven will be showing us some exercises. Yes. Um, so don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Planet Africa Television will be right back. Lift. Beautiful. Now Danny is going to bring that down by himself and push it up by himself. He's not going to let gravity bring the weight down. Okay? As you can see, he has full control. Up. Down. Up down you don't want to rush it you want to be in charge one thing you're going to get better contraction better results but more than that safety is number one okay so stay tuned while we move on to the next exercise diane is going to lift that off and she's going to stand feet wide about shoulder width apart okay 
perfect. Okay, chest is up, back is nice and arched. Okay, and she's using her glutes and her quads to come up. Beautiful, now put it back. Lovely. Now what's gonna happen when you don't have this equipment at home and you wanna do the squats at home? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna hold it, okay, as such, with our hands straightened out, elbows locked out, okay, as such. Get shoulder width apart, okay, so we're gonna pretend we're holding onto a chair, okay, and go down, okay, using your own body weight, and come back up. Don't come to a full lock, but three quarters of the way up. Wow, I guess it's time to stay fit. Uh, we just saw those exercises, yes. they look pretty difficult. Are you sure I can, <laughs> you know, we can do that easily? Well, listen, Patricia, those exercises might seem very difficult initially, but the fact of the matter is, every exercise you're going to do is gonna seem difficult initially. Uh, most of my clients, including Diane and Danny, who you saw in the video, they had to start somewhere. And they will be the first ones to tell you that even these exercises that we're doing were very difficult for them to initially do. But after a while, after practicing and learning the proper form, you become accustomed to the movement. And once that happens, you realize, hey, this is not so difficult. Mm -hmm. I can do it. And anyone can do it, regardless of your age, level of fitness. It's just a matter of tailoring it according to your level of fitness. Yeah. So but you try them out. Remember what Stephen said, intention and, and purpose. purpose. That's it. And also remember to have measurable goals That's and it. someone to help, someone That's to encourage it. you and measure the, the achievements. That's right. So uh, until next time, Stephen, I'd just like to say thank you very much for coming on Fire Africa Television. It's been a very inspiring and very educating show and I thank you for that. I appreciate it and it's been a pleasure to, to, to be on board and I, 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 I look forward to doing it again. Thank you Stephen <laughs> and thank you so much for watching Planet Africa Television. If you'd like to know more about us please visit our website at planetafrica.net. I am Patricia Baby Mawa. See you next time. Kwaheri. Goodbye. <laughs>